Hello, everyone. Uh, I am uh, Alek Kirilenko, uh, marketing manager at uh, Greenem, uh, we're a Ukrainian data analytics company, and uh, I am your host for the nearest hour or so. Uh, today, we're going to have an ever some virtual Tableau user group meeting with uh, two sessions from our international friends and uh, Tableau gurus, Tore and Christian. Uh, before I present them and the agenda, let's wait. Uh, uh, minded for those who may be a little late. Uh, and uh, I'll use uh, this chance to pass a word from Renam's uh, CEO, Alexei, and our delivery lead, Lena, who are the founders of Ukrainian user group and who unfortunately won't be able to join us today. Uh, as we uh, approach the holidays, uh, let's uh, be reminded that it's the time to celebrate family, friends, and the uh, many wonderful things in our lives, which we learn to value and appreciate even more thanks uh, to all uh, the hardships uh, of the war. Uh, and it's time to honor our faith and uh, to remember the people important to us, uh, both uh, who are with us and who we wish uh, were. Uh, with us. Uh, the upcoming celebration date uh, will mark the end of a very uh, challenging year for Ukraine, uh, so not the end of the challenges. And uh, we'd like to thank you for being strong, for being passionate about growing as professionals, uh, and for helping uh, our beloved country. Uh, uh, the world and international engineering community uh, give us uh, give us a hand and support in all uh, direction, uh, uh, like on this event. Uh, and uh, uh, the event uh, will uh, be recorded and shared, uh, so those who fail to join can check uh, on the uh, great talk. Uh, so, with no further, I am presenting you our great speakers. Uh, uh, our first speaker, Tore Levinson, he is uh, Tableau ambassador, a Norway Tableau user group leader, and Tableau JD at uh, in Meta Consulting. Uh, Tore has worked with uh, Tableau since uh, version 7.0 as a consultant, advisor, and trainer. Uh, he is one of the Europe's most uh, mature Tableau trainers with over 2,000 uh, participants uh, in 15 countries. Uh, and uh, our uh, uh, second great speaker, uh, Christian Artner Yanni, uh, he's a Tableau consultant uh, at the Youth Data to Lead. Uh, also, Christian is a certified Tableau uh, associate consultant, data and uh, uh, Tableau enthusiast. Uh, he uh, has more than 20 years uh, hands-on experience uh, in uh, digitalization and developing business solution. Uh, so let's move on. Uh, in the first speech, uh, Tora will talk about the Tableau Blueprint, uh, why and how. Uh, and over the second session, uh, Christian will present topic, uh, major user engagement in Tableau. Uh, well, we will have two talks, about uh, half an hour, uh, so you can grab your tea or something stronger, coffee, <laughs> I mean, or something like that, <laughs> uh, and uh, around uh, 7, uh, 5 or 7, 10 p.m., we will uh, be ready to wrap up. Uh, so now, uh, with no further ado, let's start. Uh, Torin, now is your turn. Uh, you have the floor. Thank you, Oleg. I'll uh, share my screen uh, when you stop sharing yours, and then I'll I'll start. Sorry. Really honored to be part of this uh, user group today. I heard there was a lot of power outages again in Ukraine, so that might count for the low number uh, online today. But as you said, this will be um, this will be um, recorded, so it will be available. Uh, and also, if anybody would like to to have access to to my presentation, at least um, I can share that with Oleg, and it could be shared throughout as well. 
So thank you for, for having me. I uh, would, would love to be on uh, better circumstances for, for your country, at least. And uh, as you said, I've been doing training for, for uh, a lot of people in a lot of countries, um, not, in, um, not in Ukraine yet. So hopefully in the future, that might be, might be an occasion to do that as well. So uh, I will talk about Tableau Blueprint, Blueprint as you mentioned. Um, I will start with the... Uh, the technology and culture, um, what's, what's the difference or what, what is different about uh, companies and organizations that are data driven versus the ones that are not. And then uh, a deep or not a deep dive per se, but we're going to talk about the, the blueprint from Tableau, how you can use the blueprint to drive change um, quickly and completely. And then how, uh, how do you start with the blueprint? Well, you can do an assessment. So you can measure your progress. And then how to get started. That will be the wrap up from me uh, in the end. And uh, there will be, uh, I'm, I'm open for questions. Uh, you can use the interactivity, use the Q&A box. Um, Oleg will monitor that and, and let me know if there's any questions. I, we can do them throughout the session or we can summarize and do them after my session as well. It's not a problem. So first of all, <clears throat> what is different about data-driven organizations? So uh, as you probably or maybe know, uh, Tableau is on a mission to help people see and understand data. That's something that, that I've done since the beginning uh, back in 2003, four, but it means way more to us now than ever because data gives um, people uh, a superpower. And um, when people tap into that power, they do incredible things. So for example, when data-driven organizations, they're, they're able to get a better picture of what's going on, make smarter decisions faster, and help everyone uh, to, to be aligned uh, and make decisions based on data and not just gut feelings or, or opinions, which is a common <laughs> problem throughout. So data-driven organizations, they have uh, 23 times more uh, chance to, to add new customers. They are one and a half times chance to grow revenue by more than 10%. They have nine times more likely to retain their existing customers. <clears throat> and they're also seven times like more likely to grow uh, the company. So this is only getting more important uh, when we see the digital transformation happening uh, faster, faster than ever. Every company today is a data company and uh, every organization needs to be data driven. And which is interesting on the left hand side, 99% yeah, of Fortune 1000 companies, which probably will be 90 plus uh, of every company uh, or larger company throughout the world will uh, invest in data and IE in the next five years. But only 8% uh, of them are succeeding in doing this. Basically, there's 92% left that are failing to scale the analytics. So why is that? Um, the, the survey um, surveyed organizations, they were seeing data-driven wins here and there, some small ones, but in, in some small departments like HR or maybe in finance, but not throughout the entire company. So the problem was that they, they didn't manage to scale those wins and the capabilities that underpinned them from, from one single department to, to another or to the organization as whole. And why, <clears throat> why is that? Well, they, they ask the wrong questions again and again. Um, they're asking who has the right skill set and is available to analyze this metric. So you have something, but do you really ask the right questions and also ask the, the, the correct people? So they, they scale it by, by these wrong questions uh, again and again. So th when somebody is searching for the data that you need to report on a KPI or whatever uh, uh, has happening uh, in the company, then somebody is asking, is this data accurate? Is it complete? Do, can I trust this? Is it recent data? Um, if you are a leader uh, <clears throat> and you don't have access to the data that you need to ask and answer your own questions, then you need to ask somebody, is there somebody that can help me who has this skill set or uh, have this, this data available? So there's a lot of these wrong questions that can be asked or will be asked again and again because people haven't 
become as data driven um, as they like. So the question is, what do the 8% know that the 92% don't know? And when uh, Tableau has been thinking about this, or been, it's been it's been in the market for for a long time. So, basically, um, Tableau. Well, we all, all of us who are here, I guess, love Tableau. But uh, this is uh, about two things. It's about the the correct technology, which could be Tableau. Obviously, that's why we're here. That's why we all lo love Tableau. But also about the right culture. So, if you don't have the uh, a data culture in your company. Um, if you have it where uh, everyone has the ability to work with the data they need, uh, when the organization foster a data culture, um, then there's a fundamental shift in the way that people think about and, and act on the data. The de this decisions are, are uh, through the organization becomes more data driven. So you need then some technology to foster and, and help this data culture. Um, the, the entire Tableau platform lowers this barrier for, for new users and brings also power to advanced users, giving the ability to create complete trusted uh, information, a picture of your data that, that is up to date, that, that is recent, that is uh, trustworthy, um, makes, uh, makes it easier for the company to do faster decisions uh, through all these uh, analytical uh, capabilities that Tableau provides. And it empowers everyone to do self-service. So the Tableau Blueprint, um, how can we uh, use this to drive change quickly and completely? Completely is always the, it's, it's, it's a depend thing anyways, because what is completely, when are you, when are you completely data driven? But uh, at least we have, or Tableau has this recipe a, a proven methodology uh, for how you can um, become way more data driven, where you, where this blueprint is providing a prescript, prescriptive, uh, repeatable guidance uh, uh, that will help you to broaden, to deepen, and to scale the use of data and to build that data culture that I mentioned earlier. So, <clears throat> If, um, uh, if if we see uh, or why did Tableau start with uh, or come up with the blueprint? Well, it's uh, they've been working with companies small and large for for years, and this is the the blueprint is now a cur cur curation of the best practices and the expertise of thousands of customers, consultants, partners, uh, helping um, you as a company uh, turn repeatable processes into core capabilities so you can start seeing business value from from the in investments and as you can see on this picture um, it looks like a subway map and I'll go through the different uh, levels in here um, and um, and Christian afterwards will uh, hone in on the the measurement a bit that is uh, in the middle there I'm not sure why he picked it was was it because you wanted to be in the middle Christian I don't know you you have to answer that in your own afterwards but uh, uh, it, when we look at the picture it's actually in the middle but we would like to look at the um, uh, these um, these different steps these different uh, subway lines and go into a bit more detail on what we what we do in there but we need to start on the left-hand side, looking at the analytical strategy. So the idea of becoming data-driven, it begins by thinking through the entire business goals and the objectives that the organization has. And how can data be used to drive forward these business outcomes or what, what are we, where are we headed? And the second step, which is extremely important, well, all of the, these are important, but if you don't get the buy-in of the, um, the stakeholders, the ones that will be involved in doing, uh, doing the effort, and also if it does cost money, you need to have somebody also who can pay for this, uh, you need to have them involved. So that should include everybody from the data side, technology side, and the line of business executives from data stewards and even your consumers, because if you make the best dashboard or the best data-driven company in the world and nobody is interested in using or consuming what you're building, then it's not data-driven anymore. So all of these individuals will play a crucial role, um, not in, in the, just in the initial deployment of your, your environment or analytical environment, but also when your uh, organization will scale. 
So we are going for that data culture. That's the that's the ultimate goal. So we see we have these three different um, um, subway lines. The first one is called agility or that first track. So that prov provides guidance on how to deploy a secure, stable environment that evolves as the business is changing or needs change. So the first step is to install and configure the software, make sure that uh, everything is uh, in the best shape. You can do a health check, make sure that the servers are running or using the, the cloud environment and the groups and everything that, that is ready. So you're sure that you have the, the right size and a secure uh, environment. And when, you, when you've done this, then you need to to, to build this agility into your environment, into your, te the, the, your tech stack. So you need to monitor. You need to figure out, is everything going as it should? Uh, when it fails, what is, the, uh, what is the failover solution or who is responsible when something is failing? And then in the end here, um, we have the maintenance which guides you on to how to do load testing, capacity planning, and upgrades. Are you upgrading every time Tableau is publishing something or are you upgrading once a year? You need to have plans or should have plans for this. And organizations today generate an increasingly huge amount of data. I mean, we've been talking about big data for, I don't know, 10 years. And uh, if you go 10 years back, uh, what they, called big data in 10 years ago is not even close to what <laughs> big data is today. So you need to have <clears throat> a tech stack that, that is agile, that could continue to grow uh, with the needs of the business and, and when the data is growing. We also have the proficiency uh, track. Um, well, everything is, is uh, could be simple depending on how you, how you talk about it. Uh, but the, at the end of the day, uh, for an organization not to be, uh, or to not only be uh, successful with the data, but also quickly make use of the data, the users need to know how to use the data. And we do this by doing a, sol a solid education plan for users. If I go back 10 years ago, when I started working with Tableau, my boss at the time said that, well, it's all nice and everything to sell Tableau, but it's self-service. So we don't get any consultancy or we can't, the customer will do anything, everything on their own. And then fast forward 10 years, I, I've trained over two and a half thousand people in, in hundreds of companies because they tend to do the same mistakes or they don't know about the best practices. The, they don't know how to, to, to show data, to visualize data. So education is uh, extremely important. <clears throat> it's not so that uh, the same education plan fits for everyone, depending on the size of the organization, how uh, educated or uh, how proficient they are al already in, in both the tool and how to present data. So this is something that needs to be needs to be uh, on a case by case basis. Is it online vid videos? Is it Google? Is it user groups? Uh, that's a great place of, of learning. That's e-learning e and classroom or, or virtual trainings as well. When it comes to measurement, that's what Christian will talk about afterwards. Um, so I'm not going to be, um, I'm not going to talk about that now. Just saying that the idea here is to um, to measure what is being used uh, in in the company. That's kind of a, one of the key words in there. But Christian will talk talk about that in a few minutes. And then the last thing, uh, and not least, the analytical best practice comes comes kind of a, in, a, in a circle from the education bit as well. But as the analytics becomes mainstream in your organization, it's important that the, the best practices be set to, to help guide users on how they should be using the data. So you can create templates, you can have your own color palettes and other elements of dashboard design to, to you also have specific guidelines on calculation, how to interact with the environment, how to, to, to publish and share data. When I started using Tableau, uh, it took me many years to, well, I don't know, three, four years before I, I did go to a, to, a, um, to a workshop with Stephen Few, a visual guru who's written several books. And then it was just hands-on on how to present data. When you have data over time, you should use this type of data. And then I came home and then just deleted a lot of stuff that I already done because it was awful. Because when you have these tools, you are capable of adding colors and animations and you can build uh, tree maps and pie charts and everything it's, it's, uh, by, by a click or a drag and drop, but it's not the best practice. Uh, 
So this is really important to, to have that and to make sure that you incorporate that before you have 200 workbooks or 50 projects, um, 2000 views out there and you have to go in and re, re, reorganize or refix uh, stuff uh, afterwards because people tend not to like to do that afterwards. And then the final track in here, the community. I mean, we're in a user group here now. Um, uh, I'm a Tableau ambassador because I've, I love to be in the community. Um, both me and Christian were in, in London a couple of weeks ago at Visit London because there was no TC Europe or anything this year. So to be together, to be in the community uh, across companies, uh, borders, um, competencies and everything, it's really important, but also in, in an organization. So <clears throat> building that community internally, that's a critical uh, di differentiator between organizations who are successful and the ones that are not. So it begins with internal communications and a strong inter intranet or uh, other communication tools that you use to, to create that connection uh, for the community. Uh, using Slack or Teams or whatever, that's up to you. Whatever you have, you don't have to invest in anything new. Just, just to, uh, just to, as long as you have something. The point is to be, be uh, have discussions in real time, asking and answering questions, so people can speed up the delivery uh, on whatever people are working on. And then you need to engage your users, putting them together to have the spirit of the cross-functional learning collaboration. Everything in an effort to get people excited about the data. You can create your own inter internal user groups or Tableau days or analytical summits, um, makeover Monday projects that are, there's so many community led projects out there. You can do those internally as well or participate in it uh, together as a, as a company. So there's a lot of fun stuff you can do to, to increase that engagement. It will have a tremendous impact on, on driving that excitement uh, as well around data. And lastly, support you need to establish a strong support environment so that the organization keep the environment humming along you are you get all the blockers out of the way as soon as possible so people can get back in into the flow of an, uh, analysis they shouldn't be stopped by something not working they sh should know where to who to contact if they if they're uh, if they're stuck so a strong plan around all of these uh, elements communications engagement and support will help uh, your customers or your users to build a strong community within the organization. And you see that these are the tracks, but also on the top here, we have something called trusted and governed that goes uh, across everything. So um, a Tableau, um, because Tableau believes in modern governance, a framework that balances the security and privacy um, and sharing, that's really important. So in this section of the blueprint, uh, uh, Tableau will share guidance on how to strike that balance through thinking about controls, roles, processes, and so on. So it's important to note that governance <clears throat> is not something that is one and done. It needs to be revisited often because the pace of change is accelerating. Um, the business needs change, and then the data change, the content in the environment changes. So it's important to have an organization that, uh, that continue to successfully drive the adoption and safely use the data. And the data needs to be trusted. You can't, if you do everything that you do in here and you have bad data, um, it's not trusted, it doesn't work. So this is, um, the blueprint, uh, the methodology that you can use to to become a data driven organization. Um, this is just the the um, the tracks. Uh, there are different stop signs, but uh, on the Tableau webpage, there's a lot of more detail on on everything in here. But then, where do you start? How do you measure your own progress? Or where are you today? And how will it change when you move forward? <clears throat> well. There's a lot of, once again, those questions that we talked about. Um, uh, but there's a lot of inter interconnectivity as well. It's requiring a, a, the engagement for a, from, from a lot of the stakeholders to navigate. Um, so where do you start to, to do this? So we, we said that the, the, there's a lot of companies that will in, invest in this and then we need to do, or what we do then is the Tableau blueprint assessment. 
So this is uh, something that you can use if you work in our organization. Um, you can start by connecting to the to the web page in here, as you can see down on the left hand side, tableau.com slash blueprint assessment. And then it can help you to navigate the, that complexity of uh, everything that I've talked about. And then trying to become uh, data driven by measuring where you are today and then provide actionable personalized recommendations on where to go from, from there. So this is based on, on data culture research and, and the Tableau Blueprint. So it's a mashup of analytical best practices and the expertise of those thousands of customers that Tableau have worked with over the years uh, and now curated to help, um, uh, help you turn repeatable processes into core capabilities. So if you, you manage to get those people involved in this, um, and you get all the different people that have um, responsibilities in different parts of the organization, these key people, uh, it will take them no more than 20 minutes to complete one of these. And you see that you can say that, are you low or high on the scale for all these different questions? And when you've done this, uh, you will get these recommendations that I mentioned. Uh, if you are very, very low, then you should do this, 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 and this. And there's a lot of um, use, use cases that you will find uh, in the results from the UN, from food, uh, UN Food Program, from Red Hat, JP Morgan, and so on that Tableau has, has put in there. So you will then have a success plan, how to move forward with, with this. So whenever you're done with an action, you mark it as done, and then you will get a score. And if I go to the next one, so how, where do we go from here? When you do this assessment, um, when you have identified your stakeholders, you can do a kickoff call or you could do that in person, depending on how, how, how easy that is to, to, to be done in your company. And then you get these key stakeholders to do those assessments. And then you meet up afterwards where you will be doing, where you will have this overview. This is all the different steps on the track that we talked about earlier. So you see deployment, monitoring, and analytical best practices. And you see that some are 100%. So you're perfect on that uh, that one, but you, have a, you haven't you have defined a strategy. You're really bad at communication. You have some, uh, some like 33% analytical best practices. So you see that you still have some way to go. It's not so that you will be 100% on everything in the next two, two years, but you will have a plan of where to go. And then when you have done, uh, when you have implemented better maintenance, better communications, you created those user groups, you, uh, you increase the engagement, then you do the assessment again, and you see that your percentages are increasing. And hopefully this will make you become even more data-driven than you are today. And that was the last slide clocked in under uh, just over 22 minutes, I think. So if you have any questions, um, I'm having to check the um, uh, the um, Q and A uh, or the chat, but if you have any questions or any feedback, you can do that now. Um, uh, I'll stop sharing. Maybe I have one question. Uh, 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 are there any right flag maybe to avoid uh, in using Tableau Blueprint? What can you recommend? Red flags of not using Blueprint? Yeah. Well, um, it's people ask also how big must our organization be to do uh, um, uh, this Blueprint or do the assessment? Uh, because we are only 50 people and um, I do both the IT or the server things and I also do training. So I don't have one person to, to in, in each and every spot. But it's it's not, it, I mean, that's uh, how it is both in both small and large organizations. So it's not a problem to do, um, to have people, uh, or if you're a small organization, uh, one person can answer more of these questions uh, on the track as well. So that's, uh, in that sense, it's not a red flag because it's not a limitation. Um, mm -hmm. Even though people might think that we're too small or or, or we, we are not. Um, if you don't have any data in your organization, then it's difficult to become data driven. But, <laughs> but uh, then again, I think most people, most people have that, uh, have data today, as I said in the beginning. 
I saw that there was one question from uh, Maxime here as well. What industries benefit most from the data from data analytics? Um, if that is a question in in general about data analytics and not specifically on blueprint, I can say after working with with data for for twenty years, um, there's I don't think there's any industry uh, or verticals that I haven't worked with that can't benefit from from data analytics. Um, I mean, companies uh, in, in the industry sector and in the public sector, uh, health organizations, um, insurance, bank. Um, yeah, I'm not sure which one benefits the most of these, but um, uh, I think that everyone uh, benefits from doing data analytics. Going from that to doing the gut feeling, because I think that we are going in this direction um, because... Mm, yeah, the wind is blowing this way, or we sold most of that product last year, then we have to continue doing that to actually uh, having the KPIs, having to or going from the what happened to what might happen to be also predictive in your uh, analysis. So you can you can uh, decide based on your data, but also you can decide on what might happen or uh, what the future might look like. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, maybe one question uh, from my side. Uh, if you talk about uh, effort, where companies should make 20% uh, uh, of effort to get 90% uh, of <laughs> effect in, in a blueprint, I mean? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. <laughs> um... Yeah, uh, what should I say? I mean, if you don't have um, support from from the key stakeholders, um, so that you whatever you would like to do on on any of these tracks, uh, if you are really um, interested at, uh, and uh, you are kind of the super user in your organization, if you don't get support from your fr from your key stakeholders, then it's really difficult to to do a lot of things that you should should be doing and depending on who you talk to i guess christian christian will say spend most of your time on on measuring because he's going to talk about that now but i mean if you don't monitoring your uh, to see if it's used properly or if you don't have any engagement in your organization then it's um there's uh, there it's not so that you can just pick and choose you should you should in a general level uh increase the percentages all over the place but i think that if you don't do the the get the executive uh, or the stakeholders buy-in it's really difficult to do do anything for example my favorite to do training if um, you would love to to do training and your colleagues would love to do training but you're not the ones that are paying for the training so if your boss doesn't say okay they don't see the point of doing training then it's 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 no point okay. so so uh -huh. it, it depends <laughs> it's the yeah. classical answer yeah yeah uh, yeah, maybe maybe let me also add one thing um, because it's also it was one of the first slides uh, that you were showing, uh, Tore, and it was about asking the wrong questions. And um, I've seen a webinar not long time ago. It was not uh, Tableau related, but data uh, related. I think it was in the context of data and design. They're doing meetups uh, frequently, and there was one guy um, holding a session. I think he was from New York, or so I don't remember exactly. And um, he was saying, and I liked it very much, the idea that we have to shift our mindset from data science to question science. You know, so that um, we have to start with uh, uh, with the right questions and uh, reflect and re-ask. Are we still? Uh, are we really asking the the, the actual questions? Um, and um, that might be the answer. So if you spend 20%, uh, you know, just on analyzing your questions, maybe you get the 80 or 90% out of it. Uh -huh. Maybe that would be another approach. <laughs> uh, yep. uh, okay, uh, thank you, Tora, for your uh, speeches. It was really great and wonderful. Uh, so now, uh, Christian, uh, you have the floor. Yep. Yeah, um, thank you. And uh, thanks, everybody, for attending. Um, uh, and uh, thanks for watching. Thanks uh, to the host for, for having me. It's an honor uh, being part of uh, Tableau User Group uh, Ukraine.
especially of course in this uh, difficult and uh, crazy situation that you're currently facing um but i think maybe it's a good idea to also you know um get back or have some kind of normality hosting tableau user group talk about tableau and uh, maybe it's important for 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 uh the brain anyway today's session is about uh, to see and understand behavior of the users uh, to get an idea of uh, different places where we can look at and um, as story was asking why measurement why I was picking measurement it uh, it's not uh, mainly because it's in the middle of tableau blueprint um no it's um because you know um it's also was part of of uh, Torres uh, uh, slides um that companies need to get data driven yeah, and uh, this is what we're telling this is what we're selling this is what we're doing on a daily basis but we also have to reflect and ask ourselves are we you know when, when it comes to our work are we measuring our own success do we have metrics for that and um, when it comes to me um, what I consider a heavy utilization of dashboards that we were building um, as success and also of course the other way around if it's not being used um, then maybe we didn't hit the spot you know then we have to ask questions about it and either improve our work or maybe even drop some ideas that seem to be good but finally that are they are not being uh, used so that that's the main thing um that i think uh, we have to do and and uh, to live what we're uh, doing for others as data analysts as tableau consultants this is why i like um this topic and um Maybe some just a few uh, sentences about me. Um, I have a background as a software developer, and uh, one thing that that I learned, I you know, I um, uh, turned towards uh, analytics and Tableau some years ago, and uh, before that, I was uh, usually dealing with uh, ERP systems, CRM systems, and uh, all of that stuff. And um, usually, when when you're having and uh, you always have uh, ERP or CRM systems in your company it's uh, not a question whether you want to deal with it usually you just have to you know like the all-time favorite time recording no one likes it uh, likes it but everybody has to do it um so we are kind of forced to do um, um stuff within our organization but when it comes to analytics um it's not exactly the same so um it's it's something that we provide you know, um, but it's not something where people are forced to do it usually. And uh, so this is why I think it's uh, way more challenging to engage users with analytics, with dashboards, with things they can look at instead of things uh, that we're building that people have to use. So that's some um, um, uh, one of these uh, challenges. Um, I love to deal with uh, all Tab with the whole Tableau platform, um, no matter whether it's a desktop, prep builder, Tableau uh, server. I also have a strong focus on uh, user interface and uh, uh, user experience design. And uh, my roles um, are I'm a consultant and uh, owner of uh, Use Data to Lead. Just a few words about uh, Use Data to Lead. Um, we're a Tableau consulting uh, services uh, uh, company. We're dealing with uh, the whole Tableau platform. Um, we're also doing uh, coding and uh, write back functions. We're also doing uh, trainings, um, also teaching, lecturing at the uh, university here in Austria. That said, we're uh, official Tableau partner here in the so-called Dach region. That uh, means uh, Germany, Austria, and uh, Switzerland. We're also hosting Tableau user group in Austria and uh, establishing the community. Um, and um, our main focus when it comes to industries that we're dealing with is manufacturing, retail, and market research. And um, we're doing um, bandwidth, uh, like mainly dealing with uh, small and uh, medium-sized businesses, but also did already um, Tableau dashboards for Google and for Roche. For Google, it was kind of funny because, you know, the company that is... Uh, offering Looker and that's offering Google Analytics and everything, but we were putting a Tableau dashboard for them. So that was kind of cool. Um, enough said about us. Um, here is just again the um, blueprint uh, that we've already seen. I was just highlighting again uh, what I'm uh, going to talk about today. And uh, this is measurement. So how can we 
measure utilization of the Tableau plat platform. Um, obviously, it's about uh, mainly about published content, so like published use and uh, dashboards. And um, oh, it's next slide. So the, the topics, uh, on the one hand, um, I want to show the views count. So that's the easiest uh, way to see how um, views, dashboards, and wor uh, worksheets are being uh, uh, utilized. And also then I want to point to the differences between Tableau Cloud, formerly Tableau Online, and Tableau Server. That said, let's do hands-on. Um, and for this, I want to um, look at, a, this is a Tableau Cloud instance um, that we uh, have for, for demo reasons. And one thing, or the easiest way to, to look whether dashboards uh, have, uh, how many people viewed dashboards, particular dashboards is on the one end you can drill down like this is a, a top level hierarchy. You can drill into this folder, then go wherever your workbook is located. Um, you don't see how many people viewed your workbook, but if you drill down another time, then you have all of your uh, published dashboards and um, workbooks, uh, worksheets. Sorry. And here you can see, um, I'm sure everybody has already seen this uh, count of views. Um, but there is another way if you want to see the whole picture because um, default you see the top level projects. But if you click here and uh, click to all views, then you get um, like, uh, like it's saying, um, a view of all um, views. Again, views being uh, published dashboards or worksheets. And if you click here, then it's uh, you know sorting ascending or descending, and then you can uh, get the most used um, uh, dashboards. In this case, it's a dashboard, yes. Um, one thing um, maybe you haven't uh, noticed yet is uh, when it comes to sort by, you can then also um, filter for the last uh, one, three or 12 months. Um, one thing that's very important that I'm using a lot, to be honest, is um, here in Actions, you can see who has seen this view. For example, if you deliver something to your client, um, to your boss, to your stakeholders, and uh, you want to see if they've already checked your dashboard, you can click here, a new tab in the browser is opening, ugly user interface, but very useful, because here you can see everybody who has seen um, uh, the dashboard, and also when was the last time when people viewed this dashboard. So um, this is a small item here who has seen this view, but very powerful and very useful. Um, when it comes to this, looking at the views count, it's the same for Tableau Server and uh, for uh, Tableau Cloud. Um, and um, this is so far, yeah, when it comes to this, this is what they have in common. When it comes to the differences between Tableau Cloud and uh, Tableau Server, let's um, uh, stick to Tableau Cloud as we have it already open. Um, then maybe you've already noticed here uh, within the site status section, there are some ready-made um, dashboards that Tableau is uh, providing. And uh, it was kind of funny because today when I was testing it, clicked several times, but it was loading and loading and loading. So I'm not sure. I think they're doing some updates right now, I'm switching to 2020.4. Um, uh, but yeah, it takes a while, but you can um, still get some insights, even like uh, traffic to views, where you say um, before you click here that it's already been removed. So it's still there, but some are not. But I don't want to spend too much time because there are some things that you can do. Um, you can check this out. But um, again, here, when it comes to the site status uh, on Tableau Cloud, it's not important because there is something else. And if I go back to explore, like to um, um, top level hierarchy of uh, everything, uh, on Tableau Cloud, you have this admin insights. You do not have it on Tableau Server. And um, if we go inside, then we have one starter work, workbook, a ready-made workbook with uh, some um, visualizations. And uh, let me click here and just open any dashboard. Uh, the first one, then you can see um, 
yeah you, you get the overview i don't want to uh, we don't have uh, so, so much time so i just want to um give you an overview and uh you can 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 figure out details if you want to but one thing that i would like to show is um the login activity drill down because here you can see um on one hand um, per week the distinct count of actors but here kind of important users that are not using table you know so you can see how many times it's been since they logged in the last time um, by different um, um, license roles everything colorized that's just the same visualization uh, with uh, uh, different um, marks so that's interesting and another thing that's interesting is here the ready-made traffic and adoption drill down because here we can you can already see the top view so like the most um viewed dashboards the top viewers um left side of the blue section for um views again from usually dashboards and here for data sources because also if you connect to data sources um i don't know let's say why a tablet prep builder or why a tablet desktop and you're just using the data sources, but not looking at the actual views. Um, last tab that I wanted to show here, stale content, um, also kind of important uh, because also though you have, uh, we have uh, like 100 gigabytes uh, capacity uh, per site on Tableau Cloud, um, sometimes we might run out of uh, space and then you can see, for example, here is uh, 1.6 uh, gigabyte data source that's not being used for over 90 days then you can also consider just to to drop it so this is the ready-made um inside startup workbook um but we can also let me just uh navigate outside um connect to the different data sources and uh for this to have a uh, tab with tablet desktop for example let me open a uh, tablet desktop uh, hopefully i'm already connected i am so i'm just uh, connecting to the same data sources that we've just seen and if i scroll down there you can see owner is a tablet system account and um, these are ready-made uh, and configured uh, data sources let's start with i don't know Tableau server events. This is something uh, that I like in, in, you know, looking at uh, the governance here. You can see there is a description uh, of what to expect when it comes to connecting to this data source. So this is best practice. Um, people will uh, love you when you're doing this. And when we're connecting to this data source, we have uh, um, one data source with different folders uh, ready made it's cool and then we can see for example um who was doing what or what's the let's let's just pick maybe the historical item name of this uh different views maybe just to make sure because there is this historical item name and here is the item name um, the difference is uh we have um, some null values when it comes to item names because um, when it when it comes to workbooks or, or dashboards, um, these items obviously have already been deleted. So there is no current item name anymore, but uh, Tableau stores everything uh, historical. So I would rather use the historical item name. And then we can just say, um, what do we have? Number Numbers of events. And um, one thing that's important, um that we have to pick the event name because here we can see everything look at these filter sections um if it's just about uh how many people have viewed this dashboard like we've seen in the views count then it would be the access view and then numbers obviously go down we can just sort it and see um which items are being used um, um most uh same story we could do is who acted like if we're using the uh, username and again let's say the the number of events and we want to have a nice bar chart and also again having it sorted descending then we can see who was acting most but as this kind of seems to be an outlier again it makes sense to um filter by 
event name and if we just pick access you then um, we have a different picture um so much for this i cannot uh, we, we don't have more time you know to go into more details because um one thing um that i wanted to show you um i think there are way more things that i would like to show but i have to look at the time um but one thing let me just get, get back to uh tableau cloud because um there is one thing that's brand new and um i don't know if uh when when uh 2022.4 was being uh, released on Tableau Cloud. It is already released. We can see it here. Um, but there is a new tab here, this usage tab. We have it, uh, and I've seen it uh, today the first time. And it's really cool. It's a new feature. Um, and here you can see um, the total views, another view um, built within uh, uh, Tableau Cloud. And then you can select within the last 30 days, 365 days, so for one year. Um, and maybe that saying, be aware that uh, standard uh, duration, how long Tableau Cloud is keeping um, these logs is uh, 90 days, unless you have um, data management add-on activated, then it, uh, it's up to one year, 365 days. And the uh, last thing to mention for Tableau Cloud is here in settings, if you scroll to the very end, then you can also say, um, configure the update frequency, whether this data should be um, included in your data sources, um, in this uh, uh, Tableau TS uh, blank, this for, for Tableau server data sources, uh, like uh, whether they should be updated um, daily or weekly, that's also, depends you know how often you look at it so much about tableau cloud and um different places where you can look at um what's being utilized let me now switch to um remote uh, uh yeah, to remote desktop to a machine uh, on, on aws uh tableau server um that i was just installing uh, uh yesterday and maybe just as a reminder, um, I was installing 2022.3, um, uh, so the latest version that Tableau Server is uh, uh, providing. And uh, just make sure if you want to use it, that for production, it's recommended to use 128 uh, gigabytes of memory. So that's a lot. They changed it in 2021.4 uh, to 64 gigabyte, but now it's already 128. Um, but for demo reasons, it's still working with um, 64 gigabyte. Anyway, um, what we have to do, and maybe let me just um, switch back quickly to the slides. We've already seen this. Um, when it comes to Tableau Server, we don't have this admin insights that I was just showing. Um, so it's kind of less comfort because um, the ready-made admin insights um, 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 easy way to start. Um, but we have way more flexibility and way more tables and everything, the whole uh, or almost the whole Postgres repository uh, from Tableau Server. And um, by default, you cannot access this uh, repository. Uh, what you have to do is um, um, to uh, type this into your uh, command prompt. And uh, with this password here, you just have to set your own password. So that would go like uh, it's here in my, let's use the clipboard. Usually this works with remote desktop. Um, so it's a one-time thing where you then just say um, my password and then hopefully something, you know, whatever. And um, so here at this place, you set your password. If I click enter, then I have to um, apply the changes and then restart Tableau Server. I was already doing this yesterday because otherwise uh, this takes, you know, like uh, 20 minutes or so. And um, as soon as you've done this part, one thing that you can do, well, this is uh, Tableau Desktop, connect to data and connect to the Postgres repository. Um, from Tableau, and um, it's uh, you're connecting obviously to localhost as we're on Tableau server port is uh, 8060 so standard for Postgres 
the database that's important it's called workgroup and uh, then you connect with uh, your the username this is also something that's um, um, predefined and the password that you were uh, typing into command prompt and if i connect now then we get a bunch of tables so that's really a lot um, from the postgres repository and obviously we cannot talk about and um, maybe do not want to talk about every single table so let me just um, pick uh, one of the um, main or most important tables that would be the historical events we can build uh, relations with um, the, 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 the matching tables are the ones like um, historical users. Scroll, scroll, yeah, like here. Um, and then you pick the actor user ID. It might also be a target user ID, but that's mainly for subscriptions. If you um, uh, add, adding someone else for a subscription, then you have your users, same, for views so that you know what uh, this view is referring to. That's wrong, what's suggested here. So we have to change it to this and maybe just um, the last thing would be, what's it called, the, the historical event types. Um, like this, and I think this works by default, yes. So we have a relationship and uh, now we can do the same like what we were already doing. Um, uh, for example, just uh, let's use uh, the name of the view and then we can say, what can we say? Like maybe just uh, the counts of everything. That's just, uh, you know, we just have uh, very low numbers when it comes to views because it was just clicking uh, yesterday a little bit uh, to have some values and uh, again we should uh, make sure that we're just uh, looking at, at at the correct type again here you see it's repeating what we're having at tableau cloud is a curated a uh, ready-made um, pre-built data source but here we can do everything uh, by ourselves um, and see how many um, views per dashboard. And uh, again, there's way more, of course, we can do with that, full flexibility. And uh, to give you a better idea, there is a, no, not this one, but a GitHub page. I can post it into the uh, chat, but I will also, um, uh, share my slide again and there is a data dictionary for everything that's included in this Postgres repository and um, if you click to just uh, any every column is described not just type but also what it stands for you get the idea of primary keys and foreign keys so that's really uh, very helpful and um, there is another thing uh, maybe just one last thing that I wanted to mention is uh, they're also on github you can find some ready-made data sources when it comes to tableau server insights so that you don't have to do anything by yourself um, and uh, there's not enough time to show them but uh, you can uh, check them and download them if you use a uh, uh, tableau server and then you have kind of ready-made data sources just switch to your own local host um, when it comes to connecting to the data source and that's it so far. Um, yeah, I think time is over. So I'm gonna stop. Maybe let me just show one more time if you're interested into the URLs of the data dictionary or of the uh, GitHub page where you can uh, get these ready-made data sources. And um, that's it from my side. I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, thank you, Christian. Uh, for speech, we have uh, one uh, question from our Q and a blog. Uh, 
what uh, in-house specialist uh, does the company uh, need to make the first steps uh, toward being a data-driven organization? Or could it be uh, entirely done by uh, service providers and cons consultants? Yeah, I guess that goes also back to the blueprint in general. Uh, yep. But uh, yeah, you can also answer that, Christian, I guess. No, just go ahead. That's or, fine. So. Yeah, it's. Uh, um, I mean, it's the organization that should be become data driven. So you can try to do everything internally, but you need you need to at least have somebody who is a kind of a super user or uh, take responsibilities internally. So you could try to do those steps that I showed, or you could um, get those your. Uh, you could either do you do do one out of two things. You could ask your key account manager at Tableau to provide you with some contacts either internally from Tableau or you could contact um, any of the local uh, or international partners, uh, Tableau partners as well that have done this many times and help you do the assessment, for example. But it, it, ideally you, you should be, or you should try to do it on your own if you don't have the capacity or um, the, 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 the knowledge or you, you're a bit uncertain how to do it please contact Tableau or your local partner. Uh, thank you, Laura. Um, so maybe one more question from my side, um, uh, Christian. Uh, maybe can you share some uh, unusual or untypical cases from your practice um, that uh, uh business uh, uh that the business can provide easy provide uh, for from your from their side and uh that cases that cases for example uh they are not uh, uh ex acceptable for businesses something like that uh, yeah I'm, I'm not sure if i understood the question right mm -hmm. but maybe mm -hmm. so what one thing and um also you know, referring to what I was just uh, showing and telling is um, it's something that we were doing for, for a large company not long time ago is we were um, measure utilization, but in terms of user experience, you know, because with very different um, comments on whether dashboards are fast or slow performance is always big, a huge topic of course because no one wants to wait for for something and just see a spinning wheel and what we we're doing then uh, is exactly uh, like what we was just showing on tableau server connecting to everything and um check there is uh, another data source uh, the http request so finally it's the, the web log and then we were um, measuring for the different people Finally, the user experience um, related to loading times because it was also, you know, same dashboard. So what we learned, same dashboard, uh, same, same, same uh, workbook. Um, also at different times, one user was waiting for, I don't know, less than one second. Another user was waiting for 12 seconds, you know, and uh, next user was waiting an average for, I don't know, four seconds. And this is the reason that you better understand your users because they would some of them would tell you everything is so slow that's so poor we cannot work with that. Others might uh, tell you no, there is not an issue at all. And then you can um, dive into it again, um, drill down and see okay maybe there are um, times you know like every time at nine a.m. where everything slows down and maybe there is another IT process uh, related process or something like this and. Um, this is uh, kind of was an maybe un unusual use case or a business case where we were using um, this this uh, tablet server insights or finally web blocks, you know, um, to to improve our work. And I think that's always a good idea, you know, not just telling others what to do, but um, uh, doing the things that we're telling others to do to by ourselves. So I like the idea very much. I hope that I answered your question. Yep. Yep. Uh... Okay, so uh, thank you, Christian, uh, for your speech, uh, and uh, thank you all so much for the stream. Uh, and uh, I think it was very practical, lively, and fun. And uh, the recording will appear to the uh, next few days uh, via email for our uh, meeting attendees. Uh, and uh, I think uh, see you on, on the. Uh, next our events 
uh, in the next year. So one more thank you guys for your speech. Thank you for my side for attending. Thank you for watching. Okay, so thank you. Bye bye.